Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to my studio here in the UK, in, in beautiful Derbyshire in the UK. Um, it's a lovely winter's day today, the sun is shining, and um, there's a few bit of autumnal leaves loitering around, which is, uh, which is nice, and uh, yeah, we are looking forward to doing a bit of watercolour painting. It is a live demo, folks, so who knows what's going to happen. Um, from the moment I start painting, it's going to be about a 30 minute demonstration, so do um, sit back, put your feet up, grab a coffee, relax and enjoy the demo. It's been a while since I've done a demo here on the YouTube channel, so I thought, you know what, Christmas is on the horizon. You can just see Father Christmas just washing his red sack. Anyway, what we're going to do is paint a Christmas card about 30 minutes what materials are we going to use for this well if i just quickly mention as far as colors i don't know until i start painting if i'm honest um so it's going to be a case of just kind of watching enjoy but you could in theory just use primary colors for this so you could use a red a yellow and a blue that'd work fine but i'm going to be using all my natural range of paints which are all here and i'll sort of do them as i see fit the paper it it's a landscape orientation and it's a small kind of postcard size sheet of paper but what I've actually got is this is what I'm using these are the um, greetings card kits that we sell over on watercolor TV you get a pack of 10 with 10 sheets of watercolor paper instructions on how to use plus the bevel mounts even the envelopes and the pre-scored card for folding so they are really nice I think they're about £11, something like that, to pick these up. So these are available over on my website, which I'm going to pop on the bottom of the screen in case you like any of the stuff we're using today. Um, and I should quickly mention as well, if I can find the logo. There's a the logo. There it is. I should, I should quickly mention today, as I'm doing this live, it's actually Black Friday today. Put that, put that over there. It's actually Black Friday today. And I'm sure you're fed up of seeing emails about Black Friday, but over on Watercolor TV... There's a Black Friday sale happening right now until midnight today. So if you want to get yourself some extra super value items like one of my extra large tree and texture brushes, which are normally £22, these are on at the minute at £11.99. You can't get those anywhere at that price. That is a super, super price, £11.99 over on the website. Just do a search on the website for tree and texture brushes. My sky and cloud brushes that make painting skies nice and easy, they are on. I think they're on at £14.99, something like that. Really good prices floating around today. The fantastic brushes, which normally sell at £27.99, are currently on at £20. So it's £8 off the fantastic brushes. And of course, the blending blades are on offer as well. Loads of other cool stuff to talk about, but we'll get stuck into some painting very soon. But just before we do, if you was with me during the workshop, the live workshop that I did last week, the 20th of November 2022, we're painting it. I want to show you this because this is lovely. This was really nice. We're painting in this beautiful robin on a post box let's have a look on the overhead camera you can see it in detail look at that this was great and a big shout out to people that took part in this live virtual watercolor workshop you can do this from anywhere in the world and it's a lovely way to enjoy watercolor painting just using primary colors that was the painting that was created live during last sunday's workshop this is the one that's coming up this sunday do please check it out uh 27th of november 2022 is the one that's coming up this i'm just talking while we're getting a few people in there's a few people dropping in so it's good just to have a chat um sunday 27th of november is the next one as i'm sat here live on the 25th of november um so a couple of days from now i'll be i'll be painting a winter water mill with frozen lake and a beautiful snowy landscape. Look at that watermill top right of your screen. You can't beat that beautiful snow scene. There's something really, really nice um, about painting snow. It is, without a doubt, my favourite subject. And this workshop, I'll pop the information just here so you can see as well, is the one that's coming up. Now, if you're watching this after the 27th of November, there's pretty much one every single week, really. Um, so just head on over to the website. Here's the website. 
Uh, I'm just going to fire this up for you. Basically, just go to the website and very, very simply have a look at, at this icon at the top of the screen. You can see it flashing here. That's the date of the up and coming one. We've only got about 14, 15 spots left for this one. Um, the watermill one. So do check that out if you've not had a chance. Get yourself booked in for £10. You can watch it live or at any time. I'm sure there's some people here that are actually taking part in the uh, workshop this Sunday. Let me know in the comments if you are taking part in this Sunday's workshop, the 27th. Give me a thumbs up, give me a yes. And hopefully, if you've not, if you're thinking about it, you think, well, I need to buy all the stuff. You don't, you need very little materials for these workshops. You want some red, this is crimson or natural red. You want blue, natural blue, French ultramarine blue, something like that, cobalt blue, and the yellow which is natural yellow light. All you want is three colours and three brushes to do a live workshop with me. That's it. And these are the brushes that I'll be using. So I've got a size 6, a size 10 and a size 20. But anything around that would be fine. So you might have a 14, a 16 for the big one. You might have a 10 or 12 for the middle one. You might have a 5 or 6. I mean, these are the super point brushes, which are beautiful. That's all you need to do the workshop. So there you go. There you go. All the links are in the description below. Here's the watercolour paper for today's Christmas card. So it's currently 12.45, quick time check. That's the live time as, I'm, as I live and breathe on the 25th. So half an hour from now, we'll have a picture. Now talking about thumbs up, there's 125 people watching this live as I'm, as I'm sat here now. I've only got 17 likes. What are you playing at? Come on. Give me a like, Just give us a thumbs up, give us a like. If you don't like it, give us a thumbs down, but give us a thumbs up. And also, if you're new to me, you need to be subscribing. If you've not subscribed to the channel already, hit that notification bell. Every little helps, it really does. Back to this. Right, piece of watercolour paper. It's a small sheet of watercolour paper. It's from the greetings cards kits that you can buy on Watercolour TV. What we have here is a nice and close up for this one. I want to paint a wintry scene here and I'm just going to sort of do this from scratch. 30 minutes from now, we'll have a picture. Nice quality masking tape here. Remove the masking tape by running your fingers over it a few times. Beautiful. And what we'll do here is we'll pop this. Let's have a little think which way we're going to do this. We're going to slightly dip about a third of the way up. A bit higher, actually. And we're going to slightly curve. So you've got a slight curve to that tape. Now, that is just simply stuck to a board. Now, as far as brushes for this, I mean, it's a small sheet of paper. So a size 10 brush is going to go a long way. It really is. And like I mentioned to you, as far as this, it's a demo. It's not a workshop, it's a demo. Um, so just kind of watch, grab a coffee, enjoy the process. You can re-watch it any time, of course, and have a go yourself. So I've got the water pot, which is actually just off of the screen here. You can just kind of see the brush wiggling around in the water there. Nice premium cotton paper. My first thing to do is make sure the tape is stuck well. Got the kitchen paper in case I start crying because it's quite emotional this painting malarkey and we're going to wet the top section of this this watercolor paper here it's just a small size it's probably no more than five inches by eight something like that I mean it really is up to you how big you do this put two coats of water two coats of water on sky keeping it nice and simple and then over to the palette I'm going to use a little bit of natural red some natural red, beautiful. I love that colour. Or you could use crimson or something like that. Alizarin crimson. Quite strong with the red. Beautiful. And we're going to sweep this up. Okay. Sweep it up. And then we're going to go for blue. Just blue. Just blue on its own. Just some blue by itself. Can't beat a bit of blue. There's some blue on its own. Bit of blue for dads, as Peter K says. There's the blue. And then what we'll do is we'll come for the blue and sweep that in. So it's a qu quite a dramatic looking background. Ooh. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Can't go wrong. Rich, vibrant colours is what it's all about. Ooh. Bring it in. There you go. Now I've got a coin here. 
and the piece of kitchen paper. I'm excited. I wrap that. They don't take much nowadays. Now in my forties. Now in my forties. My forties. Don't tell long. There's a coin wrapped in tissue there. We'll pop that on there. There you go. There's your moon, son. Stick it on. Now, what I want to do here is take some salt. Literally, I've got a little bit of salt here. And I want to sprinkle some salt on to make some falling snow. Now, can you see the salt in the hand? You think I'm mad, don't you? If you just tuned in, just enjoy the moment. We'll sprinkle that on. And we'll leave that to dry. We have to let that dry naturally, unfortunately, um, because salt is a bit random. You can see it just starting to do something there. See that there? You can smell the fear, can't you? Mm -hmm. We've got 54 likes now. Well done, guys. Let's try and get 100. We've got 150 people watching live. We can get, we can get more than 50 likes. Whereabouts are you watching from in the world? We want to say hello to uh, Anne from Cape Town. Hello to Michelle from Vancouver. Go to Vancouver. Have you got a spare bed, Michelle? I'd love to see. I only have Himalayan salt. Works every time. It's just, this is just normal table salt and it will slowly happen. It'll slowly do its thing. You can't really force it. Now what it's doing, the salt, is it's absorbing the moisture. Is it me or is it moist? You can just see it starting to do a little bit. Now, it'll work better on the red than the blue. Why is that? Because red, weirdly, is a less staining colour than the actual um, blue. The blue is more of a staining colour. But we can see it just starting to do something, can't we? It is. It's just sneaking in a little bit just there. Um, Lorraine is from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. And there's nowhere more exciting than Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. That's very close to me, actually. Wendy is from Canada. Hello to Wendy. Uh, Seda, great name, is from Sri Lanka. Hello to you. Terry's from Australia. Uh, March is from Florida. We're all over the world. Brian is from Cheshire. Pam um, is from Germany. Got some relatives that live in Dortmund, actually. Patricia is from Dorset, and I'm from Derbyshire. You are here around the world. Um, Northern Michigan uh, is uh, Kathy's from. John is from Bolton. Beautiful place, Bolton. That's the home of Peter Kay, yes. Um, and Kat is from New Jersey. Hello to you if you've joined us live today in this little watercolour world of Mr Palmer. This Christmas card is starting to dry. We're going to leave it to dry for a few minutes, but in the meantime, you need to be getting yourself booked into this. This workshop is taking place on the 27th of November. It's £10. £10 you can watch from anywhere in the world, live or at any time. Check this out while things dry. So I'm mesmerised looking at myself painting there. So what, you, what you've just seen there, folks, is a little sneaky peek in some of the the workshops that have have, have taken place 
um, over the past almost three years now I've been doing these virtual classes and what we're doing here today is very much a demonstration a quick demo it's almost dry it's amazing what just that little bit of time um, difference makes when you leave that salt to dry so yeah that was just an example of, of, of some of the workshops and actually here all the previous ones are available to purchase online what's the most popular one at the minute it's the watercolour greetings cards one so go to the previous live watercolour workshop section of watercolour tv and look here um this workshop happened a couple of weeks ago and it was painting three christmas cards over the space of one workshop again it it just uses the three primary colours but remember at the top of the screen is the one that's happening this weekend sunday the 27th paint a picturesque watermill with frozen lake and beautiful snowy landscape that one is well worth sticking in your baskets folks also check out the black friday offers that are on uh watercolor tv now this here is it's dry enough. look at that it's worked nice but can you see how it's happened more in the red than it has in the um the blue now i've actually got a heat gun here so i'm just gonna give this a little bit of a blast with a, a heat gun i've got this little drying tool here so i'm just gonna sort of give this a bit of a a bit of a dry the audio goes a bit funny at this point because you don't like the noise of this thing i'm just kind of drying this off and when you dry it off after three or four minutes what happens is the actual salt just disappears it blows off in the wind blows off in the wind john says what's the best way to get in touch with issues are you talking about website issues painting issues Go onto the website and there's a contact us form, John. That's the best way. Without a doubt. This is nice and dry anyway. There it is. Beautiful, dry little picture there. Um, let's come back here. Next thing I want to do is painting some sort of distant landscape, as it were. Um, and for this, I am going to be shooting back over to the palette. And I'm going to be using some of this colour, which is actually natural violet. Now you can clearly see the difference between the two. This one's more of a purple. So we're using natural violet here. I'm going to paint in some distant landscape. I don't want to cover too much of the the, um, the, the snow there. So I want to use the brush as well just to add some impressions of trees. So if we do sort of this kind of thing, imagine these are distant tall trees. That are just kind of sitting in the in the picture so i'm just using a size 10 but notice the way i'm holding the brush right on the tip right on right on tip <laughs> but have we not paid for this it's filth right clean the brush a couple of taps on tissue and then just use a bit of water to blend this down fade it into the so that red just comes through it makes a lovely impression of Sort of like a distant hillside you put as much time as you want into that there you go beautiful and right down to the tape there that's giving us that sort of distant hill if you like that's quite effective if i squeeze the brush through the fingers a little bit i can drag this down and just pop some little bits of light i don't really care where the light is Obviously the moon is doing its thing, but that just puts a bit of light in place. It just sort of absorbs a bit of the colour. That one's a very quick dry again. So I've just got the heat gun here. I'm just going to give a quick blast with the dryer. Talk amongst yourselves because this is literally like watching paint dry. So just basically waft over with the old heat gun. It doesn't take long, does it? Or a hair dryer would work quite well for this. That's the symbol for a hair dryer. In case you're wondering, just thought I'd let you know that. Now what we'll do here is we'll get nice and close in. Get close in. Get close into that. And I want to pop some of my little pine trees on here because I love a bit of a pine tree. Uh, but what I want to do is actually use some white paint as well for this. I've got my own particular version of white paint. And I want to pop it on this scrap piece of paper here. Um, shake it, squidge it. And we'll get some white on there. Oh, white. Beautiful. Beautiful bit of white there. Get some of that on there. Get some on there. Bit of white goulash, bit of white acrylic. Something like that would do the job. 
And the brush I'm going to be using now is a very detailed brush. Give it a bit of a rinse in the water. And this brush is actually called a branch and detail brush, which is quite funny really because it's really good size. It's just a bit dirty. It's really good at painting branches in detail. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? Well, I've got this lovely opaque white paint here, which is my own brand of white. So again, it's online. Mix it in the brush. Beautiful. Just a tiny bit of water should go a long way here. Lovely. You can see it on the brush there. Okay, I've got this. What we're going to do here is paint in some wintery trees using white paint. If you've not got white paint, use any colour what works for you at the end of the day. But I'm just going to flick the brush outwards here. Make a bit of a distant winter wonderland here. Notice I put the line down the middle first. That is a good little way to do these. Flick out. I shall pop, 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 Blah, 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 if I could speak. Probably put some darker ones in here as well. Um, but we'll start off with white. And I'm literally doing one side at a time. I think that when you're painting Christmas cards, it's it's very much a case of do whatever works for your own time that you've got. And sort of doing this over a 30 minute time span, it just, I don't know, it just makes it, it's, it's different. I mean, I'm not saying you have to paint these things in 30 minutes because you can take all day really, but, but I'm just going to sort of pop that on. And also I want to drop in some, some snow at the top over the blue. So if the salt didn't work, which it probably won't on the blue, some blues work better than others. Like Prussian blue works quite well. So if you've ever come across Prussian blue in your watercolor journey, the salt does work quite well in that. So I'll pop that in to get a bit of extra falling snow there. And then we'll just sort of do a little bit of fiddling around here. Quite addictive doing these trees. So they're kind of frosty, snow covered trees, as it were. We'll get one over this side as well. Speed painting. Tiny bit of water goes a mile when using white paint. All is quiet. It was the night before Christmas. Okay, I'm just going to pop that brush to one side and grab the six size six brush here next with a bit of water and a bit of white. <clears throat> just to add a little bit of extra detail. You're going to need and you're going to make the moon look crisper if your moon didn't work well enough make it look even more of a frosty night put a nice c-shape white clean the brush uh, just remove the excess water on kitchen paper and sort of feather that in and you can make the moon look a little bit just all in all a little bit crisper a little bit sort of sharp sharper and um, still painting still carrying on back to the palette and we are going to be now using some of this natural grey. Beautiful colour is natural grey. The brush I'm using, by the way, is called the Super Point brush. And you can see why it's called the Super Point brush. It's got this lovely tip on the end of it. Um, this is the size 6 Super Point brush. Which is good for doing this kind of detail work. So now that's gone in, I'm going to use the grey. I'm just going to sort of continue even even extending from what we've already done. So for example, here, we're gonna work in the white a little bit. So I'm mixing the gray with the white at this point. That just might seem a bit odd, but it will give a lovely effect of sort of frosty trees. So you've got some trees that are in shadow, let's say, working along this area here. So it's like working in conjunction with what's already in place. Over here you can put some little darker areas of tree and then just let that sort of mix with the white. So the white becomes part of it. Can you see because white is dead easy to reactivate. You don't have to worry about 
white paint going on wrong because it's really really simple to reactivate the paint Are you with me? Sorry. We lost sound then. Here I am, talking away to myself. Thank you. Where's, where's your sound gone, Mr. Palmer? Well, we are live and it's all going to plan. I dropped a wire. Anyway, we're back. We're back. Are you with me? We're back. We're back live. You missed the treat there. Look at that. We have a beautiful... I'm back. Give me a round of applause. Oh, very good, very, very good, very good, very good, very good. We're back. Are we back? We're back. At last, says Alice. A wire fell out the microphone. There's a microphone there and the wire fell out. But here we are. Did you enjoy the peace and quiet of Mr. Palmer then? I think you probably did. It was nice and quiet. What we've basically just been doing here was using using the size six brush with some gray and basically what i was doing was getting really close in with that gray and allowing the paint to interact with the white even if the white's dry you can just drop in a little bit of almost kind of shadow i suppose you could say and that would have the opposite effect as well if you was to grab some of the white paint which is still here look just on the corner of my screen here the palette screen let's get this palette camera a little bit more where it should be there we are and basically 
you can just add little bits of white to these trees. It's really important to have a good white in watercolour and this is Matthew Palmer's white, it's a lovely one if you've not already picked up a tube of it, it's a lovely one but that makes a nice pretty little thing and what we've just done is removed the masking tape very carefully as well at that point so that is now nice and dry. Let's add a little bit more masking tape here, yeah. remove stickiness and let's pop this here and tapering down like that. So what we'll do here, you might also have missed I used a little bit of water to blur the snowflakes a little bit. So if your snowflakes were looking a little bit too definite, just tap a bit of water over the top of them and that's a great way to just blur them, soften them especially in relation to compared to the snow that was caused by the salt. This is salt, but over the blue, there's a chance it probably wouldn't do anything. So that's why that was uh, done that way. Okay, natural violet is the perfect colour for painting your, your shadows in your snow. So that is natural violet, which I've got here on a size 10 brush. We'll pop that across. Clean brush really, really well get it in quickly so you could use a violet you can mix a violet from obviously from blue and um, red but just a nice pale color skim over i want to make it clear that what we're doing here is a demonstration folks the demos are are quick speedy things i've just picked up a bit a little bit of the gray as well so if you want to be more steady, that's when you go for your workshop style. There you go. So you've got that nice kind of shadow cast across. Now what I'm going to use here as well, if we jump over to the palette, is one of my tree and texture brushes here. Is a Matthew Palmer tree and texture brush. This is the small one. I want to use this with some natural brown and natural grey mixed together. Mix the colours together. And then we're going to use this. So it's quite quite strong. Quite strong. Let's stick all that in there. It's quite a definite area. Perfect. That's going to go along that edge, you see. Now that needs a little bit of a dry. So I'm still here. Basically what happened is that the microphone wire fell out the back. It is not haunted in the studio. Let me tell you my favourite Christmas cracker joke. That of course was the lip sync version because when I put that microphone on, the uh, hairdryer even, the microphone decides it doesn't like it too much and it uh, cuts out the audio, which is probably what happened earlier actually. But we're just going to do little gentle taps with this brush. This is a small tree and texture brush. Work on that edge. Like so. We'll also clean the brush at this point. And we'll bring in the white on the brush. To make it look a bit snowy. So if you've got some white, use it and enjoy it. Of course it doesn't matter if you have or haven't, but I always think it's quite nice, a bit of a bit of crispy white on there. Of course we can do more once it's dry, it's a little bit damp there, so probably do a bit more once it's had time to dry that's quite effective there that that same dark color which is of course is the gray and the brown together is really good come back with the camera a little bit here so you can see it's really good at doing you know me you've seen me paint before I'm sure if you haven't what have you let yourself in for but you've probably seen me paint little sort of gate posts and little fences and things. And I do like to do something that adds a bit of scale to the picture. So 
what I'm doing here is adding a little bit of a rustic fence, just kind of running across that area there. This is using the same colour, this is using this grey and brown mix, natural grey, natural brown, some kind of dark colour. And then what we'll do here is we'll pop this on like so. I'll pop some snow on that once it's had a bit of time to dry. Quite effective, yeah? Gives it a bit of scale. A little bit of a turn the board around. Lovely brushes, these are the super point brushes. Again, everything we're using here is available on the website. And don't forget what today is, it is Black Friday. So it's a great time to get hold of some extra special deals. The extra large tree and texture brush is actually on, which is this one here is actually on at 11 99 today. That's Friday the 25th of November. So there's some good little offers floating around um, the website. Then of course, watercolor TV members do get 10% off as well, um, which is quite nice. So there we are. Now let me take, oh actually, just before I take the tape away on that area, I'm just gonna take some of this nice thick white paint and just pop in a little bit because it's almost dry now. So I'm going a little bit heavier and we'll actually run some of this white um, just down the sides of these little posts here. You see I'm just popping a little bit of snow on the, on the top of there. Now obviously you'll only see that in areas where You've got dark paint to support it, but that does work quite nice, don't it? That little bit of bit of white paint in there. Beautiful. That adds a nice bit of a wintry vibe to it. And then if we come back with the camera a little bit here, we'll just gently remove the masking tape again, just do it very slowly. Um, try not to rip it off with too much passion and then just very very quickly to finish off and it's always the finishing touches that make the biggest difference in these paintings in my opinion uh, we've got the violet again which I'm just going to drop in this corner here quite strong so I'll just put a little bit in the corner here clean brush and then literally we're going to use water to fade that up keep cleaning the brush keep tapping it on tissue as you do this and just keep going with the brush until it eventually just becomes part of the picture and then uh, it just kind of lifts that up just a very very quick blast with the, the heat gun again the audio goes off i'll tell you another christmas cracker joke lip reading style There we go. A couple of little finishing touches. There's your moon. Button moon. Who remembers Button Moon? It was a kids' TV show, right? I'm sure it was. And Button Moon. Was it? I think it was. Put some shadows from these posts. Button Moon. Bit of bottom moon. So I'm adding a couple of little shadows to the foreground basically here just to give a bit of a cast feel as though the moon is shining through the snow. Um, it's not essential, but it just kind of helps to lift things up a little bit, I think, in my opinion. It's optional, it really is. A little bit of dance in that foreground there. And uh, make sure things are really quite dark down on the bottom edge here to create a lovely contrast 
of this edge compared to the snowy edge. It's so nice having a bit of white paint at hand because you can just sort of drop in little bits of white wherever you feel the need to. Um, I'm sure that lots of people think that you can't use white, but I've been using white for a long time on my painters and I enjoy using it. I enjoy using white, so do have a go with white. And it depends how far you want to go with your painting, really. But for me personally, a little bit of white paint just, just adds a lovely bit of a edge to your painting. And... Quite surprising what a difference it actually makes a bit of white paint, is it not? Beautiful, nice little wintry picture there. I always think it's nice as well on a picture like this, just to try a bevel mount. The greetings cars kits that we have do come with these standards so you can pop that little frame on there should you wish and it kind of frames the picture quite nicely so you can decide how much or how little of the picture that you want in in view but that's a nice little way to finish or just to simply remove the masking tape just leaves a clean crisp edge so there's no sketching in that picture it was just painting completely from start to finish and it made a lovely picture with the bevel mount on at the end it just beautifully frames it makes a lovely Christmas card style scene thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it don't forget to check out the website folks literally get yourself onto the website um, all the w's.watercolor.tv check out the up and coming workshop that's taking place on the 27th of November or the one that's coming up close to the time that you watch this demo on the YouTube channel uh, and of course this week we're painting a picturesque watermill with frozen lake and beautiful snowy landscape that's going to be a belter make sure you get yourself booked in it's important that you book yourself into these things it is keeps the paint flowing Three colours, three brushes is literally all you need. And remember, we do have a Black Friday sale running throughout today as well. So do get yourself on the art shop. You've got the tree and texture brushes on offer. You've got the blending blades on offer. You've got the Matthew Palmer Fantastic Tree brushes on offer. The Sky and Cloud brushes are on offer. The new books are on offer. Yes, you need to just check out all this stuff, folks. You've got the landscape book is on at $7.99. This is my watercolour book. It's on at $7.99 on watercolor tv today signed copies the mountain book as well watercolor mountains that contains six beautiful paintings there's the six paintings that you actually can even see those up there but the six paintings um and they are all um available for you to enjoy look at them on here so the mountain book is on offer signed copies you get these nine projects all using the three colors that we spoke about earlier on and the final little treat for, for this Christmas card demo is we've still got a few copies left of these Matthew Palmer watercolour calendars they've got some beautiful watercolour pictures on um, these are signed copies the last few a handful available but if you want to show your support folks it's free to show your support you know what to do subscribe and hit the bell Show your support even more by booking a workshop Sunday the 27th. Thank you so much, folks. All the links are in the description below. That was today's watercolour Christmas card. I hope you enjoyed watching that paint dry on that bit of paper. Thank you for watching. Thanks very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you soon. Take care.